Good evening to everyone. I hope that you are well. Uh, thank you so much for joining Faith Central Church's Lenten Season Consecration uh, Purpose and Power Conference Call. I'm uh, Pastor Nelson Henry, and uh, we are ready to get started. We have been on this journey uh, for the last few weeks uh, about this Lenten Season Consecration and this evening, uh, we chose to do it on Tuesday instead of Wednesday uh, because of a scheduling conflict. But I thank you for those who have been uh, taking this journey with us. I thank you, uh, especially for my church members who I have the honor of uh, pastoring week in and week out for these last seven years. Uh, and I'm grateful for those of my uh, social media family who's joining us by the conference call line, by Periscope uh, and or by Facebook Live uh, who have decided to join in. Hey, uh, I open tonight as I've opened uh, every week. This is our year of the commanded blessing as we have been ministering uh, at Faith Central Church. There is uh, a divine enablement and magnetism uh, that God has given you that will attract to you what you need and desire as a sign of fulfillment according to the will of God for your life. It is the will of God that you have better than what you have now. No matter what you have, it is still the will of God that you have better. And the best plans that you have for yourself, God always wants to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. To that end, then, I want to uh, share a little bit about Lenten season, uh, and then we'll jump in. Lent uh, is the solemn observance in the liturgical year of many Christians, Christian denominations lasting for a period of approximately six weeks leading up to uh, Easter week. It starts uh, on Ash Wednesday and usually ends on Maundy Thursday, uh, which is the Thursday that is during Holy Week. The traditional purpose of Lent is the preparation of the believer uh, through prayer, penance, uh, which is reflection, uh, repentance, almsgiving, and self-denial leading up to Holy Week, celebrating uh, the birth, the life, uh, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what we're doing, I know that people look at Lent differently. They go on different Lenten consecrations, uh, and ours at Faith Central Church hasn't been that demanding. What we wanted to do uh, is just really create a collective Christ consciousness. That's what we wanted to do. So every week we've been on our conference call, every week we've had reading to do, uh, every week the Lord has given me a lesson just to build you in faith as it relates to uh, what we call our core seven. Although we teach it at Faith Central Church, I believe that it is applicable uh, to any believer. Our core seven uh, and our core, it represents Christ-oriented regular exercises. Christ-oriented regular exercises. It really is our desire uh, to be like Jesus. We want to be more like Jesus in every way possible. And if we get everything on, if we get everything on earth uh, and miss heaven, we really haven't fulfilled our responsibilities as believers. I think that we can have both. I think that we can have heaven on earth as we are preparing to go to heaven from earth, uh, but we can't have heaven on earth and not make it to heaven. With that in mind, and I believe that there are at least seven Christ-oriented regular exercises uh, that if you fulfill and I fulfill as believers, we should be in pretty good shape uh, to prepare for heaven. And those seven are that we have to uh, read and study the word of God. The second one is develop and maintain a prayer life. The third is uh, the that we have to fellowship with other believers. The fourth exercise is that we have to tell others about Christ. The fifth exercise is that we have to obey God. The sixth exercise, which we will talk about tonight, is give liberally. And the seventh exercise is to believe God for everything. So when we think of the core of a body, you should think of your midsection or your waist area. The core is the central or most important part 
That's why the core is important. The central or most important part. They're the major muscles that assist the body with posture and support. So as we hear the word of the Lord and as we develop a prayer life and as we fellowship with other believers and as we witness to others about Christ, as we obey God, as we give liberally, uh, and as we believe God for everything, our spiritual posture uh, is changing because of what we do regularly. Regularly, excuse me. Also, our core is for stabilization or for equilibrium of our body. And it's necessary. Our core muscles are necessary for major movement. I believe that God wants to move us in major ways, uh, not just in the great by and by, but in the here and now. And so over the last few weeks, we've been sharing with you. Uh, this is week number six. And we have shared with you uh, about the power of the word, the power of prayer, the power of fellowship, the power of a witness, and the power of obedience. That's what we talked about last week. Tonight, I want to talk about the power of giving. And I specifically want to talk about the power of giving to God. The power of giving and the power of giving to God. I'm going to share some things with you that I pray would challenge your thought processing on how we look at uh, two things uh, that are very important to us daily. And so for the context of tonight's conversation and tonight's lesson, for my people who are on our conference call line, the phone, I want you just to be attentive and to be in prayer. For those who are joining on Periscope, I would that you would tap that screen to send hearts up and to share with others. And for those who are on Facebook Live, if you would tap the screen and write comments as well, uh, I'd love for you to do that so it could be uh, a tad more interactive. So I want to share tonight about the power of giving and specifically the power of giving to God. Tonight, I want to talk about two specific things, uh, really, for the general context, and that is time and money. Time and money are so important to people, and time and money are important to people because it seems as though <laughs> we don't have enough of either. Uh, I talk with people all of the time, and they, they often say, I wish I had more money, or I wish I had more time. And I think that that's very important, and we need to talk about that and discuss that. And I want you to hear my heart tonight uh, as somebody in the body of Christ uh, who does not have an issue uh, with giving to the Lord and who uh, does not have an issue with trying to use my time wisely. So the first thing I need you to understand is that time, let's dive right in, that time and money are tools, not toys. Time and money are tools, not toys. And when people do not have an understanding that time is a tool and money is a tool and neither one of them are toys, that is why if we'd be honest with ourselves, there are instances in our lives that we could say that we've not made the best use of time because we played with it, because we play with toys, not understanding that time and money are tools tools. You don't play with tools. You build lives with tools. You play life with toys. You build life with tools. And the first thing I need you to understand is that time and money are tools and not toys. We are building our lives. And so God only gives us so much time uh, on planet earth that we are intended to use as a tool to build the life that he has already put a blueprint out for us. Also, money is a tool and not a toy. And the fact that we are building our lives and the lives of others with the tools that God gives us. So, so if you'd be honest, there have been times that you might have, and I know I have, uh, wasted or misused time and money. And frustration has set in, and frustration set in because there is a relationship with time and money. Let me prove it to you. When you go to the store to buy something, and I really feel that this is about to be a great lesson. I want you to 
share it if you don't mind if you're on Periscope or you're on Facebook Live. When you go to the store to buy something, you are not just giving them a $20 bill. What you're doing is, is that you're giving them the time and the energy that it took you to make that 20 and now there is the process of exchange that is going on. The process of exchange. So we have this process going on all the time because we give up time of our lives at a job in which they give us an allocated amount of money. And after they give us an allocated amount of money, we've exchanged time for money. We now take that money and we go exchange it for things, for goods and for services. We pay bills and so we pay an electric bill so we can have the service of electricity to be able to live our lives. We pay a mortgage or a lease payment or rent so that we can have shelter over our head so that we can protect ourselves so that we can get good rest so we can get back up to go exchange some more time for some more money. So there is this exchange that takes place and when people understand that time and money are tools and not toys, we tend to experience, I know I do, less frustration. So I take this same concept of time and money and this same concept of exchange and now I bring it to the context of the Lord or the church. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that you must have the capacity to give to God. You must have the capacity to give to God. What are you talking about, Nelson? I don't believe you just give God your money as it relates to a tithe or an offering or a charitable contribution, but you are exchanging your time, your energy, your effort, your emotions. Uh, you're sacrificing some of the things that made you comfortable to leave your bed, to go to a job, not just to provide for your children, not just to provide for your family, whether it's a husband or a wife or what have you, or a single mother. But now God is challenging you to give to him. And some of us are in a position that we have more than enough. And some of us are in a position that we have just enough. And others of us are in a position where we do not feel as though we have enough. And no matter where we find ourselves, whether we have more than enough, just enough, or not enough, we still need the capacity to give to God. We need the capacity. What do I mean by capacity? Capacity, I mean by capacity that you have to have, you need faith to give to God. You need you need faith to give with to God because when you give to God, you're operating on another system. If you'd allow me to say, when you give to God, you're operating in the kingdom versus operating in an earthly system. And 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 the function of the kingdom is different from the function or the of the function of the system or the function of the world. So you need Faith. And faith says that I have the capacity to believe and the capacity to receive. What are you talking about, Pastor Na? Um, You can, you know, just as well as I know, that you can buy a house, but a house will not buy you a home. You know that you money will buy you a security system, but money will not buy you peace. You know that just as well as I know that. You know that money can buy you nice name brand clothes, but it will not buy you self-esteem. You got to have faith to have self-esteem. You got to have faith to have a home and you have to have faith to have peace. So it's the same thing when you give your money to God or trust God with your time and your money, you've got to have the capacity to believe that God is who he says that he is, that this system actually works, and that you've got to also have the faith or the capacity to receive what it is that God wants you to have. I don't want to be that deep, mystical, and spooky because when it comes to money, I want to be very, very direct and in your face. Look at here. You, it is my belief that you and I will never have enough money or time. We will never have all that we need to have everything that we want because the more that we have, the more that we want. And the reason why we want more, please hear the man of God, it is not because we're selfish. It is because God put an insatiable desire 
desire inside of us to want more and more. One of the things that we talk about at our church and one of the scriptures that we share regularly is Psalm number 115 verse 14 that the Lord will increase you more and more. So the reason why you have a desire for more once you get more is because God has placed that desire there. But the only way you get that more and more is that you have to have the capacity to give to God what you believe is valuable to you. Come on, I want to recap. Time and money are tools and not toys. And if you're going to build the life that God has already put a divine blueprint for you to have, you've got to trust God with the tools that he's giving you of time and money. We need to ask God for forgiveness for the time that we treated time and tools, uh, time and money like toys and not tools. And now that we have that revelation, a revelation and realization that that time and money are tools and not toys. Now we're ready to build by faith the life that God has already designed for us. So here is the understanding. I exchange my time for some money. I exchange my money for services and products. When you give to God, let's make sure we get a few things straight. You cannot buy salvation because if you could buy salvation, some of us would qualify and some of us would not. And I don't know how much salvation would cost, but I'm sure that even with two degrees, I don't have enough money that I could buy salvation. You can't buy healing with money. You can't buy um, you can't buy uh, miracles with money. You can't buy a blessing with money. But you can sow into salvation. You can sow a seed into miracles. You can sow a seed into blessings. You can sow a seed into healing that shows God as an act of faith. Lord, I trust you with the tools that you gave me, time and money to build the life that you've already designed for me. And so God, let's talk about the tither just for a moment. God shouldn't ever have to fight you for a dime out of every dollar, considering that he gave you the ability to get the dollar anyway. Let me say it again. God should never have to fight you about a dime out of every dollar to get uh, the the, the dime, uh, give the dime to him willingly because he, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter eight, that it is God who gives us the power, the ingenuity, the creative concepts, the divine genius to get wealth anyway. But one of the things I need you to understand then, since I'm talking about this exchange of time and money and that they're tools, is that on on one end, you don't just work for money. You got to understand and get a revelation that money was designed to work for you. I think I'll say it again. You don't just work for money. Money was designed to work for you. Why? Because it is a tool from God. Hear me when I tell you, and I'm going to throw it out here. So I'm going to throw it out here because this is what I throw out to Faith Central Church. I, this is Nelson. I'm going to give you some scripture in a moment. But I don't believe that that having a second and a third and a fourth job and working overtime really is a blessing from God. You might do it for a season, but to do it all of your life, I don't believe it's a blessing from God. And I'm going to tell you why. Once again, we're talking about time and money. If if you're allowed to work overtime, and let's not look at this being spiritual for a moment, the whole idea of working overtime is to make extra money. So I exchange more of my time for more money. But here is the thing. You're going to give up more of your time than the extra money that you receive because by the time that is taxed, you would have given up way more money, way more time than you got money in exchange. And so with that in mind then, if I, if I continue to work all the time, working for for money, I'll never be able to fulfill my life's assignment. But if I if I work all the time fulfilling my life's assignment, I'll never have the time to work for the money that I need. Once again, you won't ever have enough time or money to do everything that you desire to do on the on the earth. That's why you've got to trust God and give back to God some of what he's given to you because his hands 
are bigger than ours. He knows and he can stretch things that we can't stretch. He can insert time where we can insert time. He can reduce debt to increase the money that you have. He can eliminate that. That's why we've got to have the capacity to give to God. Let's dive in. I want to talk about uh, the power of giving. And everything that I'm saying tonight is in the context. I want you to think of it in the context of time and money. Because once again, when you go buy anything, you're not just spending money on it, but you're exchanging the hours or the weeks or the months or the years that it took you to get that money to be able to buy that thing. And when you look at it that way, you recognize, oh, well, yeah, I can get another $50 from somewhere, you probably can get another $50 from somewhere, but if you've got to give up another five hours to make $10 an hour to get that 50, you might want to think about those five hours than the $50 because time and money are tools, not toys. So we're done playing with it, but we're now building our lives with it because that's what God desired. So I want you to get a few notes down tonight about the power of giving, because I do believe that there is power in giving to God. I hope you're ready uh, if you're taking notes, and I hope you're receiving this into your spirit. Uh, One of the things I want you to know is that giving is the highest form of worship. We teach at Faith Central Church at the Faith Dome, we teach that giving is the highest form of worship. And how did we come to that conclusion? We came to that conclusion because giving uh, worship, in essence, worship is different from praise. When you praise God, you thank God for what he has done, for what he is to do, or what he is doing. When you worship God, you tell God who he is to you. And in turn, he tells you who you are to him. So when I give to God, I say, God, this is the most precious thing to me, the most precious thing. Some of the most precious things that you've given me on planet Earth are time and money. I already don't have a lot of it. I don't have enough of it, but I trust you that I might not have enough to finish but I have enough to get started. So I have the capacity to believe that what I give you automatically gets bigger when you give it back to me. Giving is the highest form of worship. So we, we, one of the things that we do at Faith Central Church is that we lift our offerings and our tithes when we give to God. We do it because the Old Testament teaches the concept as a heave offering or as a wave offering or as a peace offering. Remember, you can't buy peace, but you can sow into the reality of the Prince of Peace who was able to show you and give you a revelation where you hadn't had the revelation before to experience peace that surpasses all understanding. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on. So so giving is the highest form of worship because you tell God, God, I give this to you because I believe that you are worth my blood, my sweat, my tears, my frustration. I believe that you are worth me rolling out of bed, going to work, exchanging my time for some money. And before I buy any other product, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to set aside something for you because I believe I would have nothing to set aside if it wasn't for you. So you never have to fight me for something, God, when I realize that I'm nothing without you. I want to say it again. You never have to fight me for something, God, when I recognize that I'm nothing without you. Giving is the highest form of worship because it doesn't just take into consideration the tangibles, the money, the time, but it takes into consideration the intangibles, the days you didn't feel like going to work, the days the children were sick, the day your your spouse was sick, the day you were sick, the time you had to take off for doctor's appointments and dentist appointments, the day you just took vacation time or you ran out of vacation time or personal time off, PTO, whatever you call it, the time that you gave that up, it was 
was an exchange. So it's not just the tangibles, but it's the intangibles. I got to give with the right attitude, with the right mind frame. Lord, you ain't got to force me for a dime. You ain't got to hijack a dime or stick me up for a dime out of every dollar because the whole dollar belongs to you. So it is that giving is the highest form of worship. The next thing I want you to understand is that giving is an issue of change, not chance. I want to say it again. Giving, giving to God is an issue of change, not chance. Every time you give to God, especially your time or your money, things change for you. You're not taking a chance because a chance says that there is probability involved and there's a probability that it might not happen. Anytime you give to God, you have change that is guaranteed that is coming. Because the Bible says, and if God is true, and I believe that he is, that whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. So when you sow time, even if you don't think you have a lot of it, God's going to give you a harvest of more time. When you sow money, God gives you a harvest. And money, may I throw this out for free, money is the only seed that you can sow that can come back in whatever form of a harvest you need. Glory to God. Because some of us, when we sow money, we don't need more money. We need debt elimination. Some of us, when we sow money, we don't need money. We need healing. Some of us, when we sow money, we don't need money back. We need peace of mind. So money is the only seed that you can sow that can come back in whatever form of a harvest that you need. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so giving is an issue, let me get back to the point, giving is an issue of change, not chance. I want to lift a scripture for your consideration. I'm sure if you've been in church any length of time, you've heard this scripture, and I want to share it with you. It's in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. I only have two scriptures tonight for you, I believe. Luke chapter uh, 6, verse 38. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. I'm reading from the King James Version. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men given to your bosom for with the same measure that ye may uh the, with a w- w- with all excuse me it shall be measured to you again so here is the concept i want to make sure that you know that i'm an accurate an accurate bible teacher this scripture in context is actually talking about forgiveness when you read above it and you read below it you understand that it's talking about forgiveness the actual content of the text I believe, though, that there is a context that we can pull from this and and a principle, several principles about giving that we could pull out of this scripture. The first thing is that it says give and it shall be given unto you. Give and in another translation says and gifts will be given unto you. You don't pay for gifts. People give gifts because they think that you're worthy of a gift. Whatever it is that shows that you're worthy of a gift. There was a principle here that says anytime I give, it is an issue of change, not an issue of chance. So the scripture Jesus is teaching here about forgiveness, but I believe we can lift it to talking about giving to God. He says that if you give, it'll be given back to you. How will it be given back to you? In the manner in which you gave it. So when you give, it's going to be given back to you good measure, which means then God's not going to have you give and give back to you the same thing that you gave out. Because if I give you $20 and you give me $20, I have not reaped a harvest. We swap $20. Here is the thing about a seed. Let me teach a quick mini lesson because I need you to get this in your spirit. The thing about a seed is that every seed uh, has the ability to produce a harvest. One. The second thing is, is that the, the harvest is inside of the seed. Two, uh, the the harvest will never come out of the seed if the seed isn't sown. 
three. The harvest is always larger than the sea. The harvest is always larger than the sea. So if God is fighting you about giving a tithe or giving your time to somebody or or giving an offering and he's fighting you about uh, $50 because you because they asked for $50 at church, what you're really telling God is that the devil has just purchased your destiny for $50 because you have to understand that when God talks to you about a $50 seed, he has way more than a $50 harvest on his mind for you because according to the principles of sowing and reaping and seed time and harvest, the harvest is always larger than the seed. Come on, if we need to put this very elementary, think about a watermelon. A watermelon uh, starts with sowing the smallest seed, whether it's a white one or a black one. Let's just be general and generic. Whether it's a white one or a black one, that watermelon, when it is, when that watermelon uh, uh, reproduces and the harvest of that comes, it is larger than the seed that was planted. So when God talks to you about that, he says, give, we got to get over the giving part. We, we believe that if we give what seems to be a lot, we will receive what is larger than that. Come on, you got to have capacity to give to God, which means you got to believe and receive. You got to do it by faith. So it says give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, which means then in essence that what you give to others, God's going to make sure it's given back to you, tailor made just for you. It is going to be, it is going to meet needs that nobody else even knew that you had. It is going to meet desires and fulfill desires that nobody might have known that you had simply because you got it activated. You got the process activated by saying, God, I'm going to trust you and I am going to exchange. I'm going to exchange because I'm trying to build the life that you want me to have. And I recognize that time and money are tools and not toys. So I'm done playing with time. I'm done playing with money. And I'm trying to build the life that you have already given me a divine blueprint for. And so now I am going to build and do work with the tool of time and do work with the tool of money. And I am going to exchange just as sure as I exchange that time for a paycheck. I'm going to exchange that money and I'm going to invest in my future because here is the thing you got to understand. Anytime you give to God, the money leaves your hand, but it does not leave your life. Lord, I thank you. Anytime you give to God, Different from giving, I am specifically talking about giving to God. Anytime you give to God, the money leaves your hand. It does not leave your life. It leaves your present. It is sown into your future so it can develop and create the harvest that you desire. So every time you give to God, simply put, you have something to look forward to. So for anybody who will tell you, I can't afford to tithe, I would challenge you and tell you, you can't afford not to. For anybody who say, I don't have enough to give to God, I would submit to you that you will never have enough until you start giving to God. Oh, we about to separate. We about to separate some people right here, but I, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. So the scripture says, given it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men given to your bosom, shall people. God's going to cause people to give to you what you need. And let me, let me help you. I got to speed through the revelation, but let me help you. Uh, I love God so much because there have been times that I have needed some things uh, and, and I didn't know who God was going to use to come through. Uh, and I actually, uh, there were some times that my faith war was not as strong as it is now uh, and I went into panic mode and I was trying to fix it myself and God had unsuspecting covenant connections that all of a sudden uh, came and started giving to me out of nowhere because there are there are about 7 billion people on the planet and God needs you to understand that he has at least 7 billion ways to get to you what he needs to get to you before he has to create it for you. I want to say it again because I don't want that to slide by you because you need to know that when you're looking at your bills, you need to know that if you are a believer in God and you give to God, you need to know that because you will always be challenged. Do I pay this bill or do I give to God? Please understand that paying a bill before you honor God and I am not telling you what to do. I am throwing this out to you so that you can live your life however you choose to based off of the word of God. But I will submit to you that giving 
giving to God is an issue of change, not an issue of chance. So anytime I give to God, I position myself for at least 7 billion people to look for me to be a blessing to me. That's exactly what I'm telling you. So it is that giving is an issue of change, not an issue of chance. I didn't mean to stay on this scripture that long, but I really, I don't know if people are watching this live, or whether they're listening to it live on the phone or whether they're going to listen to it later, but I want the spirit to be so high in this that it will change their mentality, sort of change their reality, because God really wants to bless us in unprecedented ways, but he's still fighting about a minimum wage commitment from you, and you want maximum results, and it doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. So he, the Bible says, shall men give unto you. Uh, so I used to pray the prayer. I used to pray the prayer. And I'm going to get off this scripture so I can go to my last two points. I used to pray the prayer. Uh, Lord, make sure that when I wake up in the morning, that you know when I go out of the house, that the favor of the Lord follows me and that I operate in faith. And I still pray this similar type of prayer. And I pray, Lord, I've given. So I believe that you're going to give back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. I pray the prayer. Running over. Shall men give into my bosom. Lord, let me be in a spot where men and women are going to come to me and give me what I need. And I pray that. And I believe that you should pray that. And when the Bible says, your men given to your bosom. Another word for bosom is your lap, which means then that things that were out of your reach, God's going to put it in your reach if you will just follow the principle of giving to him. I got to make sure I throw that out too. So I used to pray this prayer, Lord, give, Lord, give to me, make sure I'm in the right spot. But then I was reading one day and I got a revelation. The Bible says, shall men given to your bosom, shall men and women, shall people put, bring stuff to your lap. Bring it within your reach because anytime you give to God, God makes things that were out of your reach. They are now within your reach. And the thing is, you ain't even got to go get them. God's going to have people scoot it just a little bit closer to you. Oh, my gosh. God's going to have people scoot it closer to you. So I asked God, I said, God, I want you to make me the man. I want you to make me one of those who, who will give into others' bosoms. You, you got to catch the revelation, catch the revelation. So, so this is what I really told God. So you catch it. On, on a basic check, on a basic check that we will write, your name can go three places. On a basic check that we write, your name can go three places. It can go on the top line, the pay to the order line. It can go on the back as a, as an endorsed check, or it can go in the bottom right hand corner where it's coming from you. I, I'm at the point now, I want my name to go in the bottom right hand corner because if my name goes in the bottom right hand corner, then it's already been on the top line. Somebody's already paid something to the order of me and it's already gone on the back line where I've already endorsed it. At this point in my life, I want my name to be in the bottom right hand corner as much as possible because if God is doing it through me, that means that he's already done it for me. Lord, I thank you. Give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men given to Lord make me the man. I, I hope that you are thinking, Lord make me the man, Lord make me the woman, Lord make me the supplier, Lord make me the producer or the connector that I don't always have to be the consumer. Because if God makes you the connector, he's already made you the consumer. If God makes you the producer, he's already made you the consumer. The next thing I want you to understand about giving is that, and this is found in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and I'm going to get through this rather quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11. The, uh, the next thing I want you to know is that giving is a heart issue, not a hand issue. Giving is a heart issue, not a hand issue. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, I, I hope that this is, I hope that this is meaningful. I want you to understand about the power of giving. I don't ever want you to forget it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11, um, but I say, uh, but this I say, I'll read it from the Amplified Version. Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap uh, sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously, that blessings may come to someone, uh, will also reap generously and with blessings. 
Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart. This is important. Let everyone give as you've made up in your own mind and that you've purposed in your heart. Let every person give according to the revelation that you have about giving. Then the revelation that you have about giving is that giving is an issue of change, not chance. And that issue, that giving is a heart issue, not a hand issue. Verse seven, he says, uh, let everyone, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, he prizes above other things, and he is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, a joyous, a prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. I got to read verse number eight so you can get this. And God who is able to make all a gr- all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance uh, so that ye will may always have and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough required uh to no aid or support and furnish in every abundance for every good work and charitable contribution. That's a lot going on. But the Bible says that when you give as you have purposed in your heart and understand that giving is a heart issue, not a hand issue. It is about the the amount is not as important as giving uh, amounts you, okay? Uh, it, it mounts, giving mounts you. It, it's the same root word that's in the word mountain. Giving mounts you. Giving sets you apart. So when you give, if you give with the revelation that it is a heart issue and not a hand issue, God said that I will make sure I take pleasure in your giving. I, I am unwilling to abandon you. God says, I will not treat you like the lottery and you give and you might win and you might not win. I won't treat you like a raffle that you might win and you might not win. I won't treat you like friends who you loan money to that you might get your money back and you might not ever get your money back. He says that anytime you give to me, I obligate myself not to abandon you. I take pleasure in what you're doing and I will make sure that you do not go without. I need you to get a revelation that you have to have the capacity, the faith, the capacity to believe and receive as it relates to giving to God. Because if you don't give to God by faith, your senses will tell you don't do it. Your bank account will tell you don't do it. But I got to share with you that anytime God talks to you about giving, he never gets agreement from your bank account. Anytime God talks to you about giving, he is never having to come into agreement with your 401k or your 403b. God never has to come into agreement with that. Anytime God prompts you to give, he is coming into agreement because he has something bigger on his mind for you than you have in your hand for him. Let me say it again, that anytime God asks you about giving, he has something bigger on his mind for you than what you have in your hand. Because giving is an is a heart issue, not a hand issue. The last thing I want to give you about giving tonight, share with you, and we'll conclude with this, is that if you want to make the most out of your living, then you must make the most out of your giving. I'll say it again, that if you want to make the most out of your living, then you must make the most out of your giving. The Bible says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and I can work this all day, but I will not. The Bible says out of the Amplified Version, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Why does he do that? He does it for the cheerful giver. He does it for the one who, when prompted to give, responds quickly. Because one of the things that's been a prevailing and a recurring thing for us is that we've got to be quick to hear, quick to believe, and quick to obey. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance 
so that ye may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. God says that if you, God uses the apostle Paul here to tell us that if you want to make the most of your living, then you must uh, make the most out of your giving. That if you want to have a better quality of life, you've got to get into a better practice of giving and specifically giving to God because giving is the highest form of worship. That's all I want to talk about tonight as it relates to giving, uh, the power of giving and giving to God. And so I want to close us out in prayer. Father, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be able to come and study your word. I appreciate those individuals who have joined us on our conference call line. I appreciate those for the individuals who uh, joined us on Periscope, those who have joined us on Facebook Live, those who watch the replay, those who watch it on YouTube. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that they get the revelation of giving. I pray that we understand that time and money are tools and not toys. And so, Lord, forgive us for time, for instances where we have played with time and have played with money and have not valued them and have not built the lies that you have already divinely uh, given us a blueprint for. In the name of Jesus, Lord, giving is the highest form of worship. And for those of us who have not been giving to you, I pray in the name of Jesus that the next opportunity that you give us, that we will jump on that opportunity and not miss our moment. We Thank you, Lord, because giving is the highest form of worship. There are several things that are connected to it, that giving is an issue of change, not chance, that giving is a heart issue and not a hand issue, and that if we want to make the most out of our living, then we must make the most out of our giving. Thank you, Lord, for the power of giving to you and the revelation that we must have the faith or the capacity to believe and receive. Money, we don't just work for it, but money is supposed to work for us. Give us the revelation. Give us opportunities to practice. And we give you praise now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much uh, for joining us, joining us tonight. Whether you see this lot, whether you've seen this live, or whether you see this by replay, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to the word of God. Hey, Faith Central Church, we are about seven years old. Uh, we are seven years old. It is my honor uh, to do this, to minister uh, through every form that God uh, allows us, every platform that he gives us to minister. And if you feel prompted to give tonight, I want to provide you with that opportunity. Uh, you can go download the app GiveLify, uh, capital G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, GiveLify, on your smart devices and search Faith. Central Church, Redford, Michigan. Faith Central Church, Redford, Michigan on Givelify. Uh, if the Lord is prompting you, if he's not prompting you, this word uh, is for you, but you can sow somewhere else. If he's prompting you uh, to sow into this word, I don't want you to miss this moment. Hey, I'm the pastor of the church, but I feel led tonight. And I didn't feel led before I got on to minister, but I'm going to get off of, of here in a moment and I'm going to go grab my phone and I'm going to sow into this word because I believe that anytime God talks to me about a seed, He's got something larger on his mind for me uh, than I'm letting go out of my hand. So, hey, if you feel led of the Lord uh, to, to sow into this GiveLify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, on your smart device, search Faith Central Church, Redford, Michigan. You see uh, our banner on there and you can give uh, any way you'd like. Hey, I really thank you for joining us tonight. You can uh, share this please later on on Facebook Live or share it on Periscope. Uh, we'll have the replay number available uh, as well on our conference call line because somebody needed to hear this. Uh, uh, tonight. Hey, we have one more week left. I would that you would join us next Wednesday. We've been doing it every Wednesday. This week we took a small deviation, but um, 
Uh, this uh, I'm, I'm glad, Mona, that this was a great word for you on Facebook Live. I'm responding to a comment. Hey, I want you to join us next week, Wednesday, where we're going to wrap this seven weeks worth of teaching up with uh, the power of believing, uh, believing God for everything. It is going to be absolutely amazing and incredible. Uh, Faith Central Church, do not forget that tomorrow, Wednesday, we are on a television and social media fast to the best of your ability. Please refrain from um, social media outlets unless it's business related or spiritually based. Also, please refrain from television, radio, or internet usage uh, that is not spiritually based. It's just for tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, do it to the best of your ability. Once again, it's not the amount that you do, but it is the attitude that you uh, sacrifice and set it aside to God. And so that's what we're doing. We're not taking a checklist to see who followed and who didn't. Uh, we're just putting it out there as an opportunity for you to show uh, your love and appreciation toward God. Hey, if you're not following me on YouTube, I, I would that you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, search Nelson A. Henry. We're going to upload this tonight. So if by chance I was going too quickly and I got into a flow and you didn't get uh, all of the notes that you wanted to get, you could certainly do that. Until next time, uh, God loves you and so do I. Be blessed.